In this series, I'll walk you through how to use Cogito to make your game. If you haven't heard of Cogito, it is a free Godot engine project template that enables you to make first person adventures, shooters, and immersive sim type games. Each video that I make will cover one topic, so you can watch them in any order. Though if you're new to Cogito, I recommend you start at the first one. In this video, I'm using some assets made by Loaf BRR, or as I'd like to pronounce it, Loaf Brr. They make great assets for Godot, and a lot of them are free, so check them out via the link in the description. They didn't pay me to say this, but I just like their assets, and I wanted to give them a shout out. Alright, so let's get started. In the previous videos, we set up our scene and made our first interactive objects with the food tray and those barrels. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to make these doors, like make them interactive and usable. As we can see, this is its own scene and I'm just going to jump right in there, see how it's set up. And we have to make some changes to this. So for that first, I'm going to save it as its own new scene so I can keep the original scene if I, for some reason, need to get back to it. So I'm going to go save scene as, and I'm just going to rename it to sci-fi door small. Okay. Uh, don't worry about all these warnings here. Um, we can ignore those. And the next thing I want to do is I want to get rid of the area 3D that is set up to work with the included script because I'm not going to use it. So I'm just deleting it. I'm going to also get rid of this script here. And then we should be ready to change this to work for our needs. Um, first, I'm going to add a node 3D. That's going to be our new root node gonna call this also sci-fi door small right click make scene root and then I'm gonna add let's see how this is set up so this one it has a door frame that I actually don't want to touch at all move the other objects out of this node would be the door itself and the animation player as well. Let's see, and the thing you have to look out for in this case is that uh, animation player, if you move it in a way where it loses the reference to the object it's animating, your animations will break. So keep that in mind and make sure that your animation is still working when you move those objects in the hierarchy. Uh, this is still good, so um, we should be all right. And then I'm gonna add another node and that's gonna be an animatable body 3D. And this one is gonna be the node that will be the actual Kokido door. So this one will get the script so I'm just going to attach the script, search for Kubito door. There we go. And before we set any parameters, um, we see that there's a warning. And this warning is that it needs to have a collider. Um, so the collider we're going to use is the collider of the door. And that one is in there. So I'm just going to move this over, put it in there. And then I also want to make sure the animation player and the door itself is in there. So I'm going to move this over as well. And then again, I'm going to quickly check that our animation is still working. And then the one thing that's left is the static body 3D that was used in the old setup. I don't need that anymore. So I'm just going to delete this. And then our warning is gone. Our animation still works and I should be good to go. Uh, if you're wondering here that this collision shape is actually not moving at all, um, don't worry about it because I'm gonna just get rid of it because 
I want to actually change the collision shape in general. So I'm deleting this track from the animation. And then I'll add a new child node that's going to be a collision shape 3D, which will just have a box shape. And I'll set this up to just match the door. Let's do that real quick. Doesn't have to be super precise. Just roughly cover the shape, right? Make sure it's not too big. All right, that should be good enough. And now I'm gonna go back to my animation player and I'll select this. And I will add a keyframe. Create reset tracks, yep. And just at the very end, I'm gonna add another one. And then here, I'm gonna switch on disabled. So now it should vanish along with the door. Yeah, and if you look very closely at this outline here, it turns white, which means the collision body is disabled. It's still there, but it gets disabled. And that should be it. Now I can go back to my door settings. Um, so the first thing we need to do is we have to make sure it's using the animation. Um, you can also, because this is actually a simple door that just moves, you could technically just use a tween. But in this animation, we have this, um, we have this door handle that moves. So I'm going to keep using that one. Um, so yeah, switch is animation based on and then assign the animation player you're using. And then the last thing is setting the opening animation name. So this one is called open. So I'm just going to type open in here. And for the close animation, um, we're just going to use the reverse opening animation. So I make sure this is checked on. And that way, when you draw closes, it just plays this animation in reverse. Um, okay. Now, what else? Um, one thing we must not forget is make sure the collision layer for layer two is active. So the player can interact with it. And lastly, we need to make sure there is an interaction. So we need to add an interaction component. So I'm just instantiating a basic interaction and the reason we just use a basic interaction is that the door object actually has its own interaction controller and it will overwrite whatever the basic interaction provides the basic interaction is just there to map the right input to it okay um so lastly i want to add an open and close sound so I have some sounds prepared. Let me just look for them. Uh, where are they? Sector C audio. Um, there is this sound. That's kind of chunky. I like it. Um, and for it to work, I have to assign this here for open and close. And then this also needs a audio stream player. So I'll add a child node audio stream player 3d um, I make sure it's positioned a little bit further up here so it's in the center and I'm gonna set this to be on the SFX bus there we go uh, this should be everything let's see if it all works I'm gonna go back here and in our scene this is still the old um, scene pack scene so i have to instantiate the new one that i made which is called sci-fi door small there we go and the way i do it to make sure it's in the exact same position is i instantiate it as a child and then just like drag it up and get rid of the old one and so this is how i just 100 percent replace this Okay, uh, let's save and see if this works.
Let me move this one up so you guys can see. Walk up to it. Alright. There we go. So one thing you might notice is because I deactivate the collider when I open the door, I cannot long I can no longer interact with it. Because the collider is needed for the interaction. And the way I'm gonna solve this is I'm gonna go back to my door and change this to automatically close after a certain time. So I'm just gonna set this to four seconds. And then the store will just close automatically. Let's see how that looks. Can up to it. Open. One, two, three, four. There we go. So we have our first door. 